Puerto Eden was the only stop for hundreds of miles along the coast of Chile. We had been really looking forward to seeing some other people, and we were surprised that as soon as we had the anchor down, a young Chilean boy came alongside in his rowboat and offered us two pails of centoya, or king crab, in exchange for a pound of rice, a pound of flour, and a couple of cans of food. There's not much to buy here in, in Puerto Eden. The store had a few bags of flour and just a few things. They were out of fuel, out of gasoline, and the port captain was real excited to see us. He told us that he only received 12 or 15 boats a year here, so he was really happy to have someone to talk to. The boat building industry in Puerto Eden is pretty primitive. Chainsaw, hand adzes, galvanized nails are how they build their work boats. Our first stop south of Puerto Eden was Caleta Elena. This is a long, narrow, protected bay, and along the sides on each shore were waterfalls and streams and a couple signs that said Agua. We read in Hal Roth's book, Two Against Cape Horn, that they filled their water tanks and did their laundry here. Also along the shoreline we saw shell middens, where the Indians had been collecting the shellfish for hundreds of years. Senor Molino, with its huge, rusty shipwreck ashore, was the worst anchorage we stopped at on our voyage south. Exposed on three sides, with a depth of 80 feet and a smooth, rocky bottom, it took three tries before we felt moderately secure with the anchorage. The huge, rusting freighter on its side was irresistible for John, Hansen, and Amanda, who climbed up and explored it. Meanwhile, I motored the dinghy straight into the ship's hold, which was filled with brightly colored starfish. When we got back to the boat, we found a small harbor seal was hanging out around the rudder, and as soon as we tied the dinghy up to the Mahina Tiari, the seal popped in the dinghy and stayed there for a couple of hours. It seemed totally unconcerned and unafraid of us, and had a bit of blue bottom paint on its nose. I first learned of Senor Taraba from a National Geographic article detailing the exploration of a recent mountaineering expedition. The sailing directions and charts gave only vague information on this largely unexplored, uncharted sound. We kept a constant bow lookout for rocks, but the depth sounder showed a fairly steady 60 feet in the milky, glacial waters. As we entered the Straits of Magellan, we contacted the lighthouse keepers on Fairway Island with our position. This was one of nine manned lighthouses that we passed while in Chile. It's mandatory for every vessel passing to contact the lighthouses. And I keep a waterproof handheld ICOM M15 radio in the cockpit just for this purpose and also to contact the passing ships that we saw in the Chilean channels. It's a lot easier than going down below to use the fixed mount VHF radio. We entered the west end of the Straits of Magellan 
which is exposed to the strong prevailing westerly winds, so we kept a very close eye on the weather facts charts and the barometer, but ended up having moderate sailing conditions and some very sunny skies for the three days that we were in the Straits. This is girly time on Yacht Mahina Tiari. And in fact, when you get tired of never guessing and cooking and cleaning, you can then bring out your cross stitch. <laughs> and this is a little number called the bird watcher. And there's a person here and he's watching a little birdie, which is a takake. And a takake is a native New Zealand bird. And he's got his little eggy nest down here. But I'm not a takake. As we entered the Cockburn Canal, we noticed that the granite rocks and islands were devoid of trees and bushes, a sure sign of the persistent gale force winds that are here much of the time. But again, we had better weather than we expected, and motoring or sailing along smoothly in light winds was the norm for Mahina Tiari. Selecting a suitable anchorage in these isolated waters is challenging. There are no cruising guides available. Many of the anchorages described in the sailing directions are only appropriate for large ships. Fortunately, we had met the captain of a Chilean yacht while in Puerto Montt, who marked our charts with many suggested anchorages and had given us some great tips for anchoring in these difficult waters. 